tracks and built the train station that many botanical garden visitors still arrive at today. During the next few minutes, we'll pass through several of the garden's renowned tree collections. This is the beginning of the oak collection. The largest red oak in the forest is over 250 years old, much older than the garden itself. Some oak species can even live to be a thousand years old. Such big trees can soak up hundreds of gallons of water a day. On side B, look for a tree surrounded on three sides by a low stone wall. It's a majestic turkey oak. On either side of the road, you'll see magnolia trees. In early spring, they explode with pink and white flowers. In a few moments, we'll once again be crossing the Bronx River. Originating in Westchester County, it is the city's only freshwater river. Once, it was lined with factories, tanneries, and mills. Most are gone now, and the water quality has improved, attracting many birds and other wildlife. In addition to the river, the 50-acre forest we've been passing on Side A is important both historically and ecologically. It's the largest surviving stand of uncut, first-growth timber in the metropolitan area. Today, the forest remains in its natural state, although it has been subjected to many unnatural disturbances such as air pollution and invasive species. Trees that fall in the forest, like those on Side A, uprooted by Sandy, open up gaps in the overhead canopy, allowing new trees to sprout and grow. As they decompose, the fallen trees provide essential nutrients to the new generation of saplings that will ultimately create a new canopy. Ahead on side B, you'll see an arched stone bridge. That area is called Twin Lakes for the lakes on either side of that bridge. A century